All right, that's going to be interesting. I'm going to read your Astro Hat chart. Um, I'm probably going to post this on YouTube. I'll leave your name out because I think it's interesting to read a chart using uh, hacks as the basis and the kind of things that you can do in order to actually put your chart to work instead of just kind of saying, oh, my sun is here, my moon is here. Um, before I start, I have to explain this background. So I moved my office to this former storage room that is then a former walk-in closet. And uh, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, it's, it's for reasons that have to do with stuff going on in the house. And so here I am. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be reading your chart from here. So let's get down to it and start looking at uh, some, some basic reminders before I get into the astro hack part. As you know, astrology is a snapshot of the sky when you were born. And basically, the signs are the character divisions of the sky. They roughly line up with some relationship between the constellations and the movement of the Earth across those constellations. If you're using the tropical, it's what's called the tropical system. If you're using what NASA uses, then you're straight constellations. But we don't care about that, and not for this uh, particular reading. So Aries is basically where you start things. Taurus is all about your identity. Gemini is all about your internal monologue. And Cancer is how you feel about the next thing you want to project in the world, given that these first three things have happened. These are basically the self-oriented signs. They're things that have to do with what is within. Like all water signs, Taurus takes the level that it's on and prepares to send it to the next level. And in the realm of interacting with actual objects, you have Leo, which is basically the character you project based on your backstory, just stuff you've been through, your genetics, whatever, family history. Given all that stuff that has piled up in your background, you then go out into the world and start projecting things. And so that's Leo. The thing to note about Leo is that it's character which you put out. I'll get back to that. Then you've got Virgo, which is basically the sign of reconciling things, joining ideas together, um, making meaning, uh, stuff you do to take care of your health because you've got your body health and then you've got a standard for health and you're trying to, you know, trying to put those together. And so Virgo does have an association with health, fitness and beauty, things like that. Um, Libra is the sign of one to one communication feedback. It's often associated with love because the idea is that if I'm still hanging out with you and I'm talking to you and I'm, I'm sending you information and then I'm getting information back from you, then I'm responding again and you're responding again and we're staying like that doing ping pong, then you've got the planet of one-to-one -one communication. It's not always with people. It can be with anything that you contact and interact with and then you give feedback to. The difference between Leo, as I mentioned, and Libra is that with Leo, you put it out there. You don't care about the feedback necessarily. Libra, you put it out there and your next response is going to depend on that feedback. And at the end of this group is Scorpio. When all is said and done with these three, you've done all your interacting and you still want something else to happen with your interactive, then you enter the realm of Scorpio, basically trying to influence people and all of the topics associated with that. These are the other signs. And then you have the world signs. Sagittarius is about the environment of actions going on around you. I like to call it the chemical bath. You know, you're trying to do a science experiment and your molecules have to sit in a bigger vacuum or airspace or chemical bath. And there's stuff that has to go on in order for the reaction to take place, right? Fire is going to need oxygen as its chemical bath. Sagittarius is your cultural, energetic, behavioral chemical bath. It's how people or things or countries or situations or bodies of knowledge do things around you. Um, then you have the structures for those things, the rules, the laws, the boundaries, the walls, and that is Capricorn. Next, you have how those things talk to each other, not just how they project to you, but how they talk to each other and past information. Anything that does this, electronics, societies, humanity, media, any kind of noise going on, any kind of crosstalk is associated with Aquarius. And lastly, all that stuff that happens eventually has to be re-received by you through your senses. And it has to say, okay, well, given all that's happened in the world, 
I'm taking in a new round to, to play out the next frame of my mental movie or mental animation. Frame one, frame two, Pisces is associated with moving to the next frame. Those are the signs. And then you have basically bodies which package those signs of characters. See, the signs, as I've just explained them, basically take any object or calculated point or body which is in them. For example, the sun, your sun is in Cancer. Uh, and what it says is that whatever the sun represents is going to take on the characteristic of how you feel about projecting outward, how you feel inward about going on some kind of journey or wanting or inclining towards something. But the sun is considered one of the planets, and for brevity, I'm going to call everything an asteroid in here. So I'm going to call the sun an asteroid. And you're like, why would I, why would you do that? Because most of what we're going to end up talking about are asteroids. And there are differences between planets, dwarfs, calculated points, centaurs, um, comets, angles. You, you know, they all, you, they're, they're generically called bodies, but it's weird to, to say that. So I'm going to call everything an asteroid just because it simplifies it. So each of these signs has basically an asteroid which or our body right or planet or something which encapsulate it it's like a moving package of aries it's like a moving package of what capricorn is supposed to represent it those are often referred to as sign rulers so again i'm not reading your astral hack chart yet i'm going to give you some basics about the bodies we're looking at um but for example the sign ruler of uh, Capricorn. I don't like using the word rulers, and you'll see why, because there's so many asteroids which are actually better than the planets that traditionally rule. But anyways, whatever. Um, and I've tried to color code in here that Saturn is associated with Capricorn, and it's also associated with Midheaven, the reputation. But um, if you wanted, if you put things in Capricorn, they basically play out with the character of rulemaking. So you're able to, to use those bodies um, when you're making structures on things. But if you want to know what your actual rulemaking or structuring or binding looks like, you have to go find the moving package of Capricorn, and that would be Saturn. The ruler of Aquarius is Uranus. The ruler of Pisces is Neptune. I'll get back to these three, because I talk about them in the book. Um, so I'll skip them. The ruler of Cancer is the moon. The ruler of Leo is the sun. So the, in other words, as the ruler of Leo, that means the sun is a body about that is interested in one-to-one -one character projection, like the way I've explained Leo. But stuff in Leo is, is what plays out when you're doing that. The sun has the, 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 the energy of where it lands. So... The way your character projection plays out does it cancer style. Anyways, let's keep going. Uh, Mercury is ruled by, oh, sorry, rules Virgo. Libra rules Venus. And now I've got four things where I'm going to disagree with most of kind of the astrology that goes around right now because, um, and I write about this in, in my books, but the ruler of Scorpio. Uh, I use Mars, and that's because they just go in a nice, neat line from the sun, and they do line up with all the all the charts and stuff I've been studying over the years. So we're going to say, for, for this interpretation, that Mars is the ruler of Scorpio. For the ruler of Gemini, that is, what, what body do we look at when we want to know how your internal thinking or mannerisms play out? We're going to look at the North Node. This is actually the wrong north node. It's the mean node, not necessarily the true node. I've got a little T there. Um, but the north node, uh, it normally has an association with destiny. But if you think about it, destiny is something that really aligns with how you feel you should have seen things. And so the sign corresponding to how you see things is uh, basically, you know, they, they line up. The north node is a good indicator. And there are also some some astronomical reasons why this this would be so uh, but anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna skip those reasons here taurus will we'll save that one for last aries 
so so the chart wraps around, right? It, it goes from these little bodies, these little things, to actual planets, to these big gas giants, and then it wraps around. And the actual bigger, bigger ruler of Aries, uh, you could get away with saying that it's Pluto. I think it's Quar when we actually look at where it lies in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the, uh, in space, right? Uh, Quar actually sits and is in two-thirds resonance with Neptune. So, um, you know, for every two rounds of, of, uh, Nep of Neptune, you get three rounds of Pluto. And Pluto's kind of like a copy of Neptune, which doesn't make it independent. So when you look at the astro chart, there are a whole bunch of bodies in the Kuiper belt with Pluto, Pluto Charon and stuff. Um, they could be rulers of Aries. But that's the big picture. If we shrink all the way back down to the small picture, we need something that really aligns with things like genetics. And I'll skip all the logic and tell you that for this chart reading, we're going to use the white moon, Selene, as a proxy for Aries. Okay, so if I want to know how you, what is this? Oh, that was my SQL. <laughs> my SQL server was getting started. Anyways, so if I want to know how um, um, you are inclined to just behave internally out of motivation and your body wants you to do it, your body wants you to do it all the time and it makes you good at it, then Selene is a good, uh, the, the planet of your blessed talent is a good ruler for that. And then lastly is Taurus. For Taurus's ruler, I would be using the not the part of fortune, which is this guy right here, but the point opposite to it, which we'll call the anti-fortune. Why? Um, basically, the part of fortune is where you're in your element. Taurus is your identity. So you're like, this is who I am. I'm a mother. I'm a, I'm a uh, business owner. I'm a counselor, whatever. It, these are the labels that you put on yourself. When you're in your element, you're doing whatever you're supposed to be doing. But the object that you interact with in your natural habitat, basically, oh, I'm getting to be a great mother or business owner or counselor or whatever, right? So the object you interact with against is the anti-fortune. It's the opposition to it. So anyway, why did I do all that? Well, I did it mainly to, to give you an idea of the jargon that I'll be using. Because sometimes when I do your astro hack interpretation, I may say, this is the planet of, this is the asteroid of, and at least you kind of want to know what planets are telling you versus what signs are telling you. I don't read houses, not really, for this, this kind of thing. However, let's get the astro hack reading started. So when I look at your chart, I'm going to initially look at um, <laughs> okay, one other aside. I'll, I'll try to be brief about this. I don't read these very often anymore. I used to read charts, got tired of doing it, because basically uh, I, was, I was reading it, reading charts for people, and it was kind of like a gee whiz moment. Oh my God, tell me about this, tell me about that. And as a Scorpio, my interaction is that I want to be able to influence what you do. I don't want to just tell you something and you say, oh, and then you go do something else, right? I want you to change what you're doing. So if I, if I feel like I'm reading your chart and I'm not, I'm not, um, giving you anything actionable that I'm pretty sure you'll act on. I don't want to do this anymore because it's wasting my time. So um, now this seems a little bit selfish, but it's stupid effective and it works for, for anybody basically trying to provide a service to you. You want to know what you like giving before you give it out. So as a business owner, you'll know uh, that, that when you run your consulting business, um, it, it takes something from you when your client is trying to, trying to like, they're, they're trying to pull from things that you just, just don't care to offer or want to offer. Or it's not your niche or whatever. Um, so I'm sure you have found that over the years with yours. Um, so what I do all the time before I read uh, somebody's astro hack chart, they, they usually don't know that I do this, but I do it all the time, is I make a relative chart between themselves and me. So I'm going to combine events here in Starfisher and combine your chart with my chart because I'm looking for something, and this is related to a recent video I posted called Relative Charts Quick and Dirty. You'll see why I'm doing this. 
Okay, so it's making a new astro chart. This is our combined astro chart. At a glance, it tells me that when this exchange that we're having goes forward, we can we can basically have the effect of Bacchus is the asteroid of friends will never leave you. Uh, indeed, I've known you for several years. We we lost contact for many years, um, but. This is pretty cool because the fact that we can still kind of talk and, and do this thing virtually is neat. So uh, Bacchus tends to be where you never quite leave that person behind. If it's on the ascendant or on the descendant over here, or if it's on the Imam Coli down here at the bottom of the night, or if it's in high noon, broad daylight, right? Sunrise, midday, dusk, bottom of night. If it's on the reputation, then it tends to influence that. I see also that the background for our communication is roughly close to information. Indeed, we're reading this chart online. Lots of people can see it. And when we're not being seen in public, there is an, an air of imagination or something like that. Neptune. Okay, that's all I need to know. Because what it tells me is, is that when I read this uh, chart, the the focus is going to be caretaking or information as the background or something like that, right? Uh, if I want to know, by the way, what the main point of our joint chart reading is, this, by the way, is called a relative chart. If I want to know what the main point of our joint chart reading is before I read yours, again, I know, I know you're like, just read my chart. If I read your chart without knowing this, I'm going to give you a bunch of garbage. And that's why I need to know exactly what to pull, what to look at. So this is just general practice. If you really want to like hit the mark uh, with with what you read, so if I want to know why this should even happen, I'll look at bodies on the vertex. I don't see any bodies on the vertex, so I'm going to cheat and just dump them all in there. Put a star there. Just throw them all. Throw them all in there and see what's near the vertex. Okay, all this stuff, all the 92Q um, support, it looks like um, the asteroid of support, which is one of the Royal Seven, we're gonna talk about this shortly, um, is near the vertex. Mm, Roxanne, <laughs> yeah, maybe not Roxanne, I'm, that, that one's looking kind of far. Uh, what is this? Armor, Nolly, probably Nolly. Okay, okay. Uh, we're just going to say very broadly that attracting support, uh, uh, associating, right, uh, reflecting a kind of truth, and being in your element are the main reasons for this chart reading. And by the way, um, the midheaven in a reading like this will give you how people see you in public. That's enough of that. Let's now get to your chart, because I know to concentrate here on the kind of support that you attract. 92Q is on the relative chart vertex and a far-reaching truth about being in your element. Okay, so that, that gives me an idea of what to look at. Let's go back to the full spectrum astrology planets and only for your chart. Actually, I think your chart is already up separately. Here we are. Okay, let's read some astro hacks. I'm going to read for the purpose of telling you how to gather support for the things that you are going after. First of all, if, if I'm looking at support for you, there's certain things that I don't need to, to clutter this chart with. So, for example, the asteroid of commitment, you know, I, it gives you a kind of darling effect when you go out into the world. But frankly, it's not as important for this particular goal. So what I'll do is take uh, basic, only the majors, and start there. Okay, so I need these majors, and of course it was a recent find that the great Taurus ruler is going to be the anti-fortune, this guy. I also want to put in the royal seven, so let's let's put them in now. Um, actually, I'll put them in in a second. One more thing. Remember I just talked about rulers? I told you what the what, what we can use the sign rulers to be when we're hacking, at least. 
um, when we're not hacking and we're okay with having the wrong planet rule the right <laughs> the wrong sign, and then it kind of lines up because forcing somebody does make people mad, and so the asteroids are making people mad, and forcing people can be switched. But if we're trying to hack, we can't mess with that. So um, we don't even bother with force. We bother with instinct, and Selene is closer to that. So, but these basics here are all of the rulers that we're going to be using. So we need them because. The asteroids of prosperity and all that other stuff, if they're next to these guys, are essentially going to be automatically used with the appropriate sign. See what I'm saying? So if you had the asteroid of prosperity next to, say, your Venus, then whenever you're communicating one-to-one -one with people, then it helps, um, frankly, you prosper very easily. And so we have to put the majors in there because they're in charge of all the signs and all the special little extra asteroids that we look at uh, are going to, um, if they have conjuncts or they're right next to any of these majors or if they're in 60 degrees or 120 degrees or 180 degrees, then they stand out more easily and it helps you basically work to your strengths instead of your weaknesses. Okay, let's add in the Royal Seven. When you want to prosper in the world in general. There's certain things that you need to do um, or it's certain things that people would encourage you to do. So uh, one of the Royal Seven is already here and that is the anti-fortune. It's your identity. The more you identify as yourself, that is you're exercising your Taurus um, or at least the objects that you refer against. Uh, for me, it's being an oldest brother it's being a uh, data artist, it's being you know any number of things, right? Those are my objects. And the more I interact with those objects and I feel good about the versions of those objects that I am, then um, the more my identity is solid and the higher my Taurus goes. So that's part of prosperity because um, a, a, lot of, a lot of what we first learn when you study astrology looks at money. Actually, let me not do the Royal Seven just yet and start with only this member of the Royal Seven, which is anti-fortune. It is the first. So it's good that we talk about it. The Royal Seven is one of those asteroids which is associated with value. So you could be a good oldest brother or a terrible oldest brother, right? But oldest brother you are. And so there would be, if, if I use that as the basis of my identity, there could be some kind of um, ramp up or ramp down of whatever this anti-fortune represents. And the better it is, frankly, the more self-assured or secure, something like secure, the more secure you are in who you are. There is an association with Taurus, the second house, and money and esteem, right? Um, it's a pretty good association. We, we like for our Taurus stuff to generate strong identity. And if we're broke, we often don't have the the options for acquiring the things we need to complete who we think we are, okay? What all that means is that your anti-fortune, your identity is part of the road to who you are, and it helps with prosperity if you're solid on that. Now let's do the rest of the Royal Seven for you, remember, attracting support was the, the goal of this. Okay, so the rest of the Royal Seven include this one which is very important, the asteroid Albion. Before it had a name, it was called 92Q, 1992QB1 for its discovery date. You also need Brambilla, the asteroid of gathering value. Um, it's really, really close to the asteroid of money. Pretty close. Um, it's about as close as you get in the first 1,000. There may be like three four bodies that are like asteroids of money, Brambilla, Bilkis, um, uh, mm, eh, maybe some others. Um, related to Brambilla is the asteroid Sulamitis. You'll have to forgive me. I'm going to call it Sulamitis, <laughs> like a disease, because that's how I learned to pronounce it. And I've never spoken to anyone who has pronounced it any other way. <laughs> so it's going to be Sulamitis, that disease that you get. No. It's the asteroid of worldly advancing gains. It's basically rising in status, rising in rank. There is, mm, what's another 
member of the Royal Seven. We have several of them down here. Galatea. This is not your prosperity. This is other people's prosperity, but it's a gift for a kind of service that you can put out there for other people uh, because you make people's dreams come true with Galatea. It's not prosperity for you. It's benefit for others. Sylvania. I call this one the convenience store asteroid because in order to win the lottery, you have to play the lottery. You have to go to the convenience store where the tickets are available. A lot of times we have dreams and our dreams are about as big as the environment that we stay in. And so what Sylvania does is it tells you which environments are conducive to making these dreams come true. Um, if you don't exercise your Sylvania, then all these other guys are only going to go as high as where you started. So these are good for support. I said that there's the Royal Seven I, and I forgot what they were. So hold on, let me click OK for this and then go back in here, put in the Royal Seven. Here we are. Marlu and Cherry Clove. Okay, I knew I was forgetting something. And then cancel and back out. Stay with the ones that I had and put in Marlu, the greatest level of riches that you can possibly share. After you've already made your fortune and you are a big time philanthropist, Marlu is what you do with your money. Um, and interestingly, the astral wheel doesn't really respect cause and effect. So it's, well, it kind of does, but it doesn't respect it nearly as much as our human brains do. So the idea is that, and, and this, is the, this is kind of the trick with astral hacking, if you do the effect, you can make the cause appear. That's the best way to put it. If you are pretty generous with your Marlowe, even though you don't have it to give, the notion of the riches that you had in order to give it starts to become true because that's just how molecules work. I don't know how... I don't know how brains work, but you know, if we're if we're interacting like this particle over here, then maybe we're that particle. That's that's how that's how chemistry thinks it goes, right? Human brains are like, no, we have laws, we have order, we have you know cause and effect, and it needs to be vetted by friends, right, or society or whatever. No, and um, that's why society can't act. Most most folks can't because they believe that stuff. You don't have to. I'm going to put in another one that's not a member of the Royal Seven called Nema, because this is what you're going to be forever known as. Strong asteroid. Very weird. It, it almost describes its own thing, which is not fitting these other planets. Some asteroids are stronger than their rulers, by the way. Neely is a better Saturn than Saturn. Nema is a better sun than the sun, and so on and so forth. The last one I had was Cherico, your ambition. That's the last member of the World Seven. Okay, cool. We were talking about having you attract support. And the first one we're going to look at is the asteroid of attracting support, which is 1992 QB1. Um, yours is in Pisces. You see Pisces. But to read things at a more fine grain level so that I can control when I do this, um, I take the signs and I chop them into 12 sub-signs, which I call duodecanates. Misnamed when I first started doing it, but I stuck with it, and so now it's called duodecanates. So, but like gears, you notice this gear turns, well, in your screen, it's clockwise, I guess. This gear turns clockwise, while this one turns counterclockwise. And so if you have a cycle inside of a cycle, they're going to go in the opposite direction. So although the normal wheel runs this way, which is counterclockwise, when I chop subsigns out, they run inside of here this way. So uh, again, outside, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo. Inside, Aries dot Aries at the end, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. Pisces dot Aries, Pisces dot Taurus, Pisces dot um, Gemini, dot Cancer, dot Leo. Okay. So you've got your 92Q, your support attractor, in the sign of feeling the vibe. What is your what is what does the mood of right now tell you to project? Because it's Leo, right? What does the mood tell you to get started? Right here. What does the mood tell you to listen to in terms of information? Right here. Pisces dot queries. What does the mood tell you to project? Right here. You just want to display your character spontaneously. You say, man, I just feel like going to that, that place and just 
just saying, hey, here I am interacting with people. Easy to get support for you. That's, that's the second of your royal seven. The third of your royal seven, uh, Sulamitis. Uh, this is interesting because, first of all, your Sulamitis is in what I call the Oprah duodecany. When it comes to what is the culture telling me to project, nobody has done it better than I've seen than Oprah in terms of a single person building an entire culture around them. Um, uh, Oprah Winfrey is essentially the essence of, of Sagittarius thought. I mean, just, uh, and, and I actually came to that from studying charts and it, she's got something there. I don't remember what it was. Um, it might be a planet, it might be a special asteroid, I don't remember what it was. But the point is that if in the context of culture, let's say you're visiting your favorite social group, your favorite hangout space, your favorite country, any place where vibes of behaviors are going on around you, and you decide to project yourself there, then rising in rank is possible. Over the last year, I've been basically using my Sulamitis. Mine is in Sagittarius 1, and big time, big time. I, I got a new job, which doubled my pay, actually more than doubled my pay. Moved into a freaking huge house. This house is huge. Um, and, I'm, and now I'm getting other stuff. Like, I'm hacking. I'm using this stuff to actually bring in money and bring in prosperity and all this other stuff. It's funny because it's the kind of thing that people say that... Um, you shouldn't be able to, well, you know, if your astrology is so good, then, then, you know, give yourself a million dollars. I'm like, I'm doing it, bro. <laughs> I'm on my way. Some of that takes a while because there are timelines to some of these things. Some of them you can pull off in two days. Others you might take nine years. That's about a, a good timeline for doing almost anything in your chart. The nine-year ones tend to be planets involving the world and how long it takes the world to see you and getting to market and and distribution processes, and business filings, and, you know, that stuff, not going to take two days. I mean, just being real with you. But there's some things like, oh my God, I'm worried that this thing is going to happen. I sure hope that I get this particular person to say this this way. That's that's a tiny thing. It's, a, it's partly living in the realm of your feelings. Could take two days. Okay. So the thing is though, when you're using any of these, what I told you about 92Q, uh, uh, adopting the mood and just kind of going out there, it's very spontaneous. And you say, man, I want to attract support. Let me do it right now. No. Um, see, your 92Q is in Pisces. Pisces is a world group. That's actually pretty slow. And so you're going to have to basically change a full mentality. And that one may take months. Um, but you have to spend months deciding, you know, I'm going to live as the kind of person who, when she feels like uh, going out there and projecting, she does. And it has to be a habit, right? That's, that's part of the thing. With astro hacking, some of these will give you quick results. But if they gave you quick results, you probably would have been doing them and you wouldn't need me to read a wheel to tell you how to do them, right? So for most of these, they're going to be... It, it, the parts that you listen to are the parts that don't, don't come easily. And typically, there are reasons why. The other thing that I note about your Sulamitis rising in the world versus 92Q for you is that they're square. Square means that they're 90 degrees apart. 90 degrees it mean, basically means when you do one, you cannot do the other, not at the same time. Doing one does plant the seeds for the other, but not at the same time. And so these can be frustrating if you're trying to get the support and rise in the world. Oh my God, these are two very positive asteroids. Let me help you and tell you how to use them because I have this problem too. And, and most of us do. It's like, I really need support in order to make my thing run, right? So for you, it might be your fashion business. It might be something else. Man, I really need support to make my thing run. You get the support, but you're not rising in rank. I mean, your chart says that, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm looking at it. So um, what do you do about that? To handle your squares, basically you have to be able to go into two different modes. One of them is where you're acti actively trying to, for you, for your chart, you're actively trying to go out and project, knowing full well you're not going to rise there. You may get people who are going to help you. But, uh, so for example, I'm reading this chart because I think 
you're you were awesome as a student, and it was it was really neat um, working with you. So, this is a form of support right now, and we had it in our relative charts. See, that's why I had to check mine before we started reading this. But um, I said check mine, but check ours before I started reading this. But the thing is, this is this this reading here is a kind of support, but it doesn't necessarily rise you in rank. The read the, the, the astro hack reading has to finish. You have to kind of I don't know process it or whatever and then if you do things in light of it obviously the reading won't be happening but the rising in rank might if you go out into the culture and project yourself next number four of the royal seven brambilla i'm going to save that one because that one's all about attracting money uh let's go to galatea galatea is where you make others dreams come true why would you do that I think some of my pessimism is going to come out. I've, I've recently learned that it is not always helpful to grant other people's dreams because unfortunately, most people want a lot of things, but they don't know themselves and they would pursue those things at the expense of others or whether or not others are benefited. Again, this is why I stopped reading charts because I found that I may have read a chart or two for a couple of people who were definitely destructive. And I was like, dang, you know, not in line with my principles. From here on out, I'm only going to read the charts of people I know or trust and who line up with my relative chart. <laughs> right. Because I have principles. And I don't want to I don't want to give the 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 lighter to a pyro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm really kind of picky. I stopped putting it on my, my website and everything. I read charts. No, I don't read charts for strange folk. I have to know that the principles line up because, frankly, astro hacking and, and, and you know, it's like giving you the golden key. Um, but if you give the golden key to somebody who's going to screw it up, then don't. Right. You have strong principles. And I remember this. And so somehow it was very easy for me to offer to read this. But making other people's dreams come true is actually something that it's I don't I don't know how to explain it, but it's kind of like. It's kind of like your badge of entry into other people's lives. And so although it's not, it's sometimes not helpful to make other people's dreams come true, you want to be you want to be aware of what you need to do in order to bring that about, because sometimes you'll want to get into the world of somebody who really needs their dreams met by you as an entry fee. So yours frankly, is on your ambition. I love this because I remember you told me you want to use fashion to bring the world together. I said, that's awesome. It's like a world size goal. That's totally what my friends do. That's like my, that's like my Galatea. So it, in some way it makes a, another person kind of say, okay, you get the thumbs up. You can come in here. <laughs> right. Uh, Galatea, you, you want to know how you do it. But what I just cited, was a statement of your identity giving your own kind of internal thoughts about it. Taurus dot Gemini. You can make other streams come true by just airing your plain old identity, internal monologue, your ambitions, right? Um, it's a really good way to, to have people to say, man, I like her. I like her. She's legit, <laughs> right? Now, it's funny because it can work the other way. You can say these are your ambitions and there, there, will, some, there will be some folks you meet who don't give a damn about that. <laughs> and they don't even like that. And they're like, screw her. You know, we don't, we don't care about others. This, this fashion industry is all about the self. It's not about making other people's dreams come true. It's just about making clothes and making bucks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yo, you know, sometimes... That's, they, they would have things that may be square your Galatea. Yeah, you know, whatever. Speaking of square your Galatea, oh, look at this Venus. This is interesting. Now, it's not quite square your Galatea. Not quite. Because this is in Taurus, Aries, Taurus, Gemini. This is in Leo, Aries, mm, let me see where it is, uh, 2708, Taurus. It just by like three degrees, that's like 87 degrees. Square, again, means that you can't do them both at the same time. So while you're having a regular conversation with someone, 
a feedback for feedback conversation, it is often the case that you are not able to make their dreams come true. I can almost guarantee you this is conducive to being misunderstood. And because and I just, oh my God, I had such a stupid day at my work today. And I was all on the confusion. Like I spit out so much confusion to my colleagues. I didn't quite feel bad because I know myself, but but it was not my best day. I was like, yeah, this code works like, and they said, what? <laughs> they said, man, what? You can, this is where you're getting confused. And I'm like, I'm a Scorpio. I'm never confused. This is how I feel <laughs> internally. I was getting all defensive in, on the inside. But on the outside, I was steadily seeing how my words were coming out wrong. I was speaking pig Latin. And I felt so bad. But sometimes you're, you're charged just like that. And you hope to have friends around you who dig it. My girlfriend for right now, she gets my confusion. I could say, yeah, some foreign word, just, just I, you know, it didn't make any sense. But she's like, here's what you meant. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. I love you, babe. <laughs> you know, so for for cases where you don't always come out right, um, but it, and, and you can't, you just, I hate to say, it, you fail to make their dreams come true <laughs> while you're talking to them. I'm not gonna say all that, but. If that were the case, it wouldn't be a surprise based on this chart. It's funny, though, because here, here's something I learned about reading charts. And I'll get back to the Royal Seven in a second, but this is just for anybody in general. You don't have to worry about offending people or, or reading anything negative in a person's chart if you just obey the golden rule and pretend that your life is their life. In their life, they're the center of their story. They're the superhero. No story is bad. Just read the chart like that. You're just like, oh yeah, and you've got this thing here. What a quirk, ha ha, you're right? And it's not gonna, it, it's not doom, it's not anything they have to correct. How would you like it if somebody read your chart and said, oh, you really had to correct this, and you really should do this, and you really, if you wanna do that. I mean, come on, nobody needs that, right? We don't live like that. So, uh, you know, I, I don't mind reading. You could you could have the, the planet of murder next to your planet of I like it, <laughs> you know? And there's a way for me to read it such that it's going to be okay. Um, we'll, we'll spin it away from the actual murder and we'll talk about the cessation of relationships. But, you know, you're not murdering everybody every day. And so there you go. I know it's a morbid example, but the bottom line is that nothing's really relative, in, uh, not relative, nothing's really negative in your chart because nothing's really negative in my chart, <laughs> right? And I read my chart as such and I read your chart as such. So don't worry about this. Uh, what you know is that when you have squares of this nature, and it's hard to, to do both the good things at the same time, as it was with Sulamitis and 92Q for you, whatever, it's okay. It's a seed planting moment. Today you have a conversation with them, and then you say, bye, see you tomorrow. And then while they're away, they're like, she's fulfilling her ambitions. That made my dream come true. You won't see it, but you planted the seed. That's how squares work. Okay, we've got... Three more of these, Marlu, Sylvania, and Brambilla. I already kind of talked about Sylvania. I said it's the lottery, it's it's the uh, convenience store asteroid, basically. So if you you want to win the lottery, you got to go get a ticket, right? Where do you go? Gemini.Gemini is where you go. Now, the difference between saying this is my ambition in Taurus.Gemini and saying this is what I'm thinking, Gemini. Dot Gemini, is that this was probably easier to really like because your north node is on it, uh, first of all. But but the way it plays out is when you're dealing with duodecanase, what you say, oh, I learned this recently and it's so unfortunate I couldn't get it into Alma Mater because I didn't know it at the time. When I wrote Alma Mater, I was basically looking at going in one direction, sub sign to parent sign. But a way to really, really use a specific asteroid to just build it up is to put yourself in the parent sign first. And in order to achieve the parent sign, do the sub sign. They're compatible. But the one that is more immediate to see in terms of your effect is going to be um, the second way. So I'm the kind of person who is how you start a Taurus statement. I'm the kind of person who thinks of 
my ambitions doing such and such and such and people's dreams are made true when I when I say that. Jim and I is it's kind of like saying my my thought process about the way I think is and, and that what I just said is actually you're Jim and I about Jim and I. My thought process, Jim and I, about Gemini.Aries, Gemini.Taurus, Gemini.Gemini, about the way I think. My thought process about my thought process is this. The more you reflect on how you think about things, and it, it's just kind of internal to you, um, the more likely you are to turn these two up. Can you do both at the same time? You kind of can. They kind of feed each other. But it's a specific kind of person now or situation or work or activity that's going to basically make this 30 degree difference and in conjunct active. So you can do several of these at the same time really hard. It's really, really hard. I don't recommend it unless you're an absolute stupid master at this stuff because if you weren't getting your 92Q to work, you really need to just look at the 92Q. Don't don't look at it. Don't spread your energies because you're going to find that in, in order to do, say, this guy and this guy at the same time, you also have to be able to handle the 90 degreeness of it at the same time. So you're not just doing two things, you're doing three things. And um, they're complicated at that because they have context for each of them. What I will tell you is, and, and let me compress what I've just said. Don't look at more than one asteroid to activate at a time. I actually had to start my Sulamitis stuff in October of 2020. I settled down and then I moved over to Capricorn 5 in, say, maybe January of 2021 because there was an asteroid I wanted there. And then recently, in maybe September of 2021, I started using my Sagittarius 7 for Brambilla. And I really kicked it into gear in October. And I recorded a couple of recordings that I've just been getting random checks from places. I got a total of seven this month in the morning, for, in, in, in the month, from odd places that I haven't dealt with or paid bills to. They're like, here's a refund, here's, a, here's another, here's a credit, here's a thing. I'm like, what is this? And it's because I've been hacking my brand villa, the asteroid of money, where mine is. I've been focusing on doing the stuff where brand villa is located. We'll get to Brambilla in a second. Almost there. Marlu is the asteroid of the greatest riches you could possibly share. It's next to Selene. Here you go again. Man, you have a talent for communicating because I look at your dot threes. Taurus dot Gemini, Gemini dot Gemini, Cancer dot Gemini. Look at this. You've got, you've got a blessed talent for you're inclined to feel how to communicate. You, you've got... Uh, opportunity granting for putting yourself in the right place when you think about your internal monologue. You've got the ability to convey what your values are. Just I'm the kind of person who has an internal monologue who thinks like this, and you can make other people's dreams come true. I mean, what a talented communicator. Just dot threes, uh, really, almost across the board down here in how you feel. It's very, very important to be able to express how you feel. And again, because of your relationship with, with Venus here, it's, it's conducive to being misunderstood. I forget what the asteroid of being misunderstood is, but it would be interesting to see where it is in your chart. In fact, you know what? I'm kind of, kind of bored. Here's my chart. Let's, 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 let's find it. Uh, control misunderstood. Uh, you can't find it. Why not? Let's just pick one. No. Okay, well, uh, is this a V lookup? Oh, misunder. Mis how about just misunderstood? There we go. Where you're susceptible to others' misunderstanding. Lucina. Ah, 146 Lucina. Okay. I wonder if I have Lucina in here. Did I put it in here? Well, that would be interesting. If I did, it would be in the end. Oh, it, I was just looking at it recently. It's my last one. Where's yours? Oh, yours is oh L U C Z. Man, I was getting fancy here. <laughs> you, oh, okay. In cultures, you're going out to foreign places, and you're you're kind of feeling different. You you you're feeling inclined to do certain things, or you're feeling inclined 
to be around certain behaviors, um, it, it, it's almost as if your inclinations within those places are susceptible to misunderstanding. So it, I would not be surprised if you went into a place, and, uh, and this is any place, um, if you're teaching, for example, that's totally a Sagittarius thing because teaching is an environment of behaviors. It's a school, it's education. It's not just higher education, uh, the way that we think. It's just education in general. And you've got a lot of people around you behaving in certain ways. When you convey your feelings or you kind of act on what you're naturally inclined to do, it is easy for you to be misunderstood. Keep that in mind. It's next to your rising in rank. So you don't necessarily pay for that. And then we wouldn't know unless we saw other asteroids here. But you just want to watch that because, you know, for all of the good stuff that you have in your chart, um, it's you, you got a couple of key squares that can make it seem like the good you're doing is not being rewarded. And that is just too bad because you've got a lot of really good stuff here. Um, you don't you you don't want to you don't want to think that your good intentions are not being rewarded. It's more like your good intentions don't 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 reap the fruits. They don't reap the rewards while you're there. You're one of those people who has to be there, leave their mark, and and may have to leave for people to kind of get it. I, I'm like that, right? I, I pop on YouTube. I'm all weird. I'm, I'm recording out of a closet. I got weird mannerisms. Like somebody told me I look like a psychopath when I'm on camera. I'm like, that's not. That's not right. <laughs> you know? Or or standing in front of a classroom. I, it's not that I don't care. It made me feel bad in the first few years. But but after a while, there's truly nothing I can do about it. Right. Like it's, it's just part of my personality. And if I'm doing too much to try to make myself into somebody different, I don't do this well. Right. I'm, I'm I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Right. So you don't want to you don't want to let that stuff bother you. You just have to find a way to use it positively. So anyway. Last of the Royal Seven is Brambilla. Brambilla is the asteroid of bringing out value. And um, bringing out value, like I said, it's as close to a money asteroid as you get. Yours is in Leo 9. And I, I had a whole private recording series about Leo 9. I'm trying to remember what I said in there. It's very weird. Um, Leo 9 is a strange place because on the one hand, you're projecting yourself. You're, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm the, today... I'm going to do me. I'm going to focus on my character, right? Leo, how do I put this? We're not all in a position to use our Leo. Um, frankly, there's discrimination in the world. And so if we all decide to be ourselves, look, I found statistically that Leo is associated with blondes, just in general, blondes and people with favor uh, or more favor. We'll just say that. I don't want to get all political about it. But, but the idea is that Certain people have an easier time getting hired or getting on the cover of a magazine or being voted in for something, right? And then certain other people have an easier time um, starting their own good old boys club. You know who those people are. <laughs> like, I'm part of that group. Um, boys club, right? Sometimes men have an advantage. Sometimes other ethnicities have an advantage. And if you're in, in an, a local enclave, it may be the other way around, right? This group does not accept that they're like this, but they don't accept those, right? So Leo is about where you can be whoever you are and take it into a place. But what you'll note is, is that if you're not a naturally Leo type in that place, you won't move there. I've moved to Georgia because I had problems with this in San Antonio. Uh, just broadly. I've written all about it in several places. Wasn't, wasn't a place for my Leo to mean anything, right? I've come out to Georgia. It's different, <laughs> but it's a lot easier. Anyway, so sometimes, and this is something that I wish I could just tell people all over the place, you just need to move. Your biggest, I mean, if there was one thing I could tell the whole world it, while they're having COVID stuff and they're fighting each other and they're resisting stuff and you know everybody's all antsy and pissed and, and whatever. I'm like, you know what? Your life would be a lot better if you went onto Google Maps, found a place where the culture ran the way you needed it to. It's not it's not separation or anything like that. 
it's support because our support systems and things like that, like networks that we plug into Facebook and, and, and uh, not, none with Facebook, because frankly, Facebook, they, 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 they amplified what we're about. It's, I mean, it's easy to point the finger at Facebook. And then, of course, there, there are things going on. But, but they, you know, we, we, we totally drink that Kool-Aid with or without Facebook. You know what I'm saying? So it's, but, but the best thing that you can do is move. Like most of the time, if you're finding that this is, this is a ceiling that you're hitting, look at the map. And if you can find a way to just kind of locate yourself, and if you can't do it physically, try to do it virtually. But I don't know, man. Getting support. So much of it is about the world you put yourself in. We, we tell ourselves a kind of story. I, and I grew up like this, too. It's like, well, if you want success, do X, Y, and Z. It's who you know and who you talk to people. And I'm like, yes, if they let you in. If they don't let you in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, ultimately, the story of success or attracting support has a lot to do with whether the, the place you're in is inclined to even give you that support in the first place. So anyway, with that said, don't expect to make tons of money on your brand villa if you're in the wrong place, especially you, because I'm reading your chart. Yours is in Leo 9, Leo dot Sagittarius. You're going to say, I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna put my, uh, my, my, my character out there, right? And hopefully these people that I'm around are gonna put me on the cover of a magazine. Are they those kind of people? I hope so, because Leo dot Sagittarius means in order to put your character out there, you're going to go gather the people the way you did at that awesome model call. <laughs> you know, I'm just it stuck with me. You're like, man, why are you harping on that? It, it was so memorable. Um, and it, 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 it was such a testament to the kinds of students we wanted um, for for just not just not just people sitting in the classroom, but people actually bringing folks together and, and making their lives better beyond having supposed knowledge dumped in their heads and seats as passive actors. I'm pretty sure like a whole bunch of people go through school and they just, where's the knowledge? Where's my knowledge? Right. But we don't want that. We don't want that as teachers. Right. We want you to be able to say, okay, I got my knowledge. Now I'm going to go out there and I'm going to build a community. I mean, I'm going to do some great stuff. So gathering people in the name of your character, um, just because this is the environment you want to create, uh, where those people exist, is gonna be how you make your money. Uh, and also you're known for that. That's uh, at least in my memory and probably a lot of other people's memory. You're known for Leo.11, which is the information which travels around you. Um, it's, uh, you'll, you'll always be known for the character of, of social noise that comes with you. That noise can be good or bad. By the way, if you're ever curious and you say, who am I interacting with? in order to build up my money, um, you look at your opposite of Brambilla. And, oh, this is fascinating. I knew I wanted to tell you this. Someone stops me on the street and they say, quick, Ajani, which of the 144 duodecanates is most associated with fashion? I say immediately, Aquarius 9. You're like, what? Why? First of all, I taught at a fashion school and I like fashion, though I know nothing about it. You're a fashion person. And when I looked at the charts of social, social energy, projecting culture specifically, uh, I mean, just lots of fashion folks have Aquarius 9 stuff going on. That's who you interact with in order to build up your value. If there are enough of those people around, you can build up good value. If there are two people, or if there are 10 people, or 10,000 people who won't let you in, not much value, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this is how astro hacking works. So what if you say, I don't have enough money. I, I've, I've looked at, I, I, man, Ajani, I've been listening to this stuff and I just want, I mean, the support is nice. It's nice and abstract. I really just want more money. I'm like, okay, we all want more money. Here's the problem though. You, in your chart at least, okay, la, la, uh, another stop on the street question. Ajani, I want more money. Tell me how to get more money. I'm like, it sounds like those charts I used to read and stop reading because I can't help you. Brambilla is often in the middle of the seven royal is in terms of what you need to take care of. One of the first things you need to take care of is probably a basic 92Q. Just getting any support for anything. 
you, you may want the money. I'm going to tell you, you may not be terribly successful, but if you want to try it, just listen to what I told you. Reflect your character and gather people. But if you haven't worked on anything else, the quality of those people will be shady, maybe. <laughs> the, uh, the number of those people will be limited, maybe. They may not be trying to rise you in rank. I would do Sulamitis before I did Brent Miller. Because if, because if you take care of where you rise in rank, then the source of your value in money is likely to be something you can live with. If you hate your job and you want more money, you might want to find a new job first because you, you might find yourself in some situation. Losing that job and being forced to apply to a better one, a higher paying one, more responsibility, some kind of day off to where some, some kind of furlough. You know, how's a furlough rising in rank? Simple. Um, you still get to keep your job. But you don't lose it completely. But, and you get to do COVID-related things maybe. Okay, fine. You're not getting a paycheck. But it's better than being fired. And compared to some other people, that might be a form of rising in rank. Sometimes a, a paid day off is as much free money as you can get because you didn't work on where you were before asking how much. You see what I'm saying? I would not recommend Brambilla until you are straight with where you're going to get that money. So anyways, um, no need to, there's no fixed order for this, but just, just know that certain things require that you be right before you, you pursue them. And we always, of course, want to treat other people with respect as well. We don't want to be robbing and stealing and things like that because those have tension effects. Um, <laughs> Even if you don't care about the people, they have tension generating effects elsewhere in your chart for the people that, that embody those areas of your life. And it's going to come back to get you. Ill gotten gains and greed and all that other stuff is going to come back to get you. Um, I wish more people were able to kind of look at their charts and understand it holistically, but none of us are in the beginning. I mean, I wasn't. It, it's taken years for me to say, you know what, we don't, I, you know, we know how to astral hack, but we don't need to eat the whole elephant at once if. Our, 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 our digestive system is already for it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I think I'm going to stop about here. Uh, this is plenty to give you to think about. Um, reminder, the whole purpose was to about attracting support first, not money, believe it or not. I'd say concentrate on your 92Q. Your your inherent desire to, to just project yourself. Uh, you're just like, man, I'm sitting here. Nothing's going on. It's a sunny day. I think I'm just going to go out and interact with something. I'm just going to go do a hobby. I'm going to go talk at that person. Not talk with them. That's that's a conversation. That's Venus. We don't want Venus right now. We're going to talk at them. <laughs> that's, that's uh, or not really talk at them. We're going to just display our character towards them. That's not, that's not Pisces.Libra. That's Pisces.Leo, the Chul. On a sunny day, wild hair, Go interact with somebody. You'll find that, that this is this is easier to get. The higher the quality of those interactions, the richer all the other stuff's going to be. And after that, you can worry about rising in rank, maybe. Uh, and after that, you can take a serious look at the quality of people you're going to have available to you for bigger things like your reputation, Jupiter, your social world, Uranus, your Leo dot Uranus, and your Leo dot Jupiter right? Sagittarius and Aquarius, respectively. I mean, a lot of what you're going to build rides on these things being high quality, but you notice your anti-fortune is kind of like esteem. The Taurus ruler is up there. Rising is up there. And you'll have to come to terms with the areas in which you may be misunderstood. If you are misunderstood, it's it's that much more important to, to find ways to understand that's part of your process and you, you do as much good as you can for the people who are currently misunderstanding and when you leave they'll get it after you leave um, but but keep building keep building don't let the immediate discourage you um, I don't know if you're discouraged I'm just I'm just on a soapbox here because I haven't talked to you in years <laughs> but um, that may or may not be useful to you I hope uh, uh, this reading was helpful to you so uh, yeah uh, that's it good luck